What is a look ahead plan in construction? This is one of the most important planning tools that you will use as a construction supervisor. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to get it done. We're gonna explain this concept in a really cool way that I think will help you visualize it. And it's gonna enable you to stop firefighting on your project, so stay with us. All right, I love this so much. We're gonna get right into this and talk about the look ahead system. You have heard in other videos that I've done how the last planner system really runs off of the master schedule, which is for the purpose of creating a duration and milestones. Then you have the pull plan, which is a way to create a sequence to those milestones collaboratively with the trades. It gets the right duration, buy-in, and sequence. The other thing is your look ahead, which is what we're going to be talking about in this video here. The look ahead is to really make work ready. Your weekly work plan, which we will link you to in the description below, which is another video on this channel. Yeah, this is specifically to make commitments. And then we have the day plan as a part of the last planner system, which really plans each and every day. And then that is tracked with percent plan complete. This happens in a meeting structure, uh, like I showed you in the weekly work planning video, where in a Monday through Friday, the master schedule is typically reviewed by the team in the team weekly tactical or your strategic planning and procurement meeting. Your pull plan and your look ahead and your weekly work plan, these happen right here in what I call the trade partner weekly tactical. Some people call it your trade meeting, uh, your sub meeting or your last planner meeting or your weekly work planning meeting. Either way, this is a longer one, typically about 90 minutes. So uh, these all loop in and happen here. And then your day plan happens every day in the what I use as the afternoon foreman huddle where uh, we are planning the next day. And if you follow this system, what happens is you have a nice flow from the overall to the look ahead in the weekly work plan, which enables you then to plan the next day. And then it allows you to plan and execute the work and communicate that work to the workers in the morning in your morning worker huddle. So this is the meeting system that I like to use. And if you're doing last planner right, you will have respect for the trades, you have collaboration, you will have commitment, and those are the key behaviors that will loop everyone in and we will leverage the wisdom of the foreman, which are the last planners or the last people in the planning cycle. So I'm really excited to talk to you about this and where the look aheads come from and how we use them. So a lot of times the uh, project team will have a CPM schedule, right? And it will have different sequences and inside the schedule, there will be different milestones. Typically from there, the team will pull this milestone down and they will create stickies in a collaborative pull plan that validates the sequence and really gets the trades to weigh in and buy in. From that, whether it's this is looped back into the schedule or it becomes its own document, typically the next six weeks out is what uh, the six week make ready to look ahead plan is derived from. But the problem here is you have all these different formats and it's not vertically aligned. What I like to do, like I explained in the weekly work planning video, is that if you have a building or a floor or a phase and you want to make sure that your look ahead is going well, you will do it in the tack planning format where you take one zone and you will pull plan that sequence in the very same way, but you'll do it just with one zone, okay? And once that pull plan is done, you'll have that commitment, that buy-in, the durations and the right sequence. And then that will come down and it will create your actual tact plan where you'll have the same number of uh, zones, you'll have the same number of actual uh, pull plans stacked on top of each other with really good trade flow and workflow. Okay, what I like to do from that is to filter out my six week make ready look ahead directly from that schedule because I know it's going to be right. So what I'll uh, see in the actual look ahead and this will be six weeks, this is just a general sketch. I'll be able to see what work is happening in the next six weeks. So the problem here is if you do it this way, 
You may not have the right milestones because it's in CPM. Uh, you may not have the right sequence because it's batched and it's not broken up by zones. And you'll have the six week make ready look ahead in a format that you're not able to use. So um, I would rather do zone, pull plan, put into attack plan, and it auto filters out into the six week make ready look ahead, which is fantastic. Let's talk about the format here really quickly. I have formats that you can use. We have an Excel template. Our lean tact services, uh, we have at least 30 people. These are qualified, educated engineers that can, with Kevin and me, format and help you with your TAC plan, help you to get used to this look ahead process, and really make sure that you have the tools you need to succeed. If you wanna do that, just reach out to us in the comments below. We can help you at any time with anything you need on your project. But let me generally tell you that in your look ahead, you're gonna have time on the top, as usual. I like to do six weeks. So you'll have your Monday through Friday, all six weeks. I do not recommend having the weekends in there because it clutters up the format and it gives us a false sense of security thinking that we're gonna use the weekends. And weekends typically don't do very much good for the project from a working standpoint. And I like to again, see my location here on the left. So phases, areas, and zones. And so inside my look ahead plan, I might see uh, different activities, you know, and they will likely repeat throughout and I'll be able to see where they show up in a time by location or again phase area and zone format. This might be a new format for people but it is ideal because if all of these are colored in the format that you're using you can see flow of the actual area itself and you can see trade flow which is the single most important type of flow in construction. The purpose of this schedule is really to get you and the foreman to see the next four to six weeks out. And I will say one thing, live more here than you do here. Meaning, imagine yourself the job, the resources, and the circumstances six weeks out ahead because when you're able to do that, you can see problems sooner. And so similar to the weekly work plan, your look ahead plan is specifically to identify roadblocks and constraints and to see if our resources are made ready. So what I'm saying is if you every six weeks out are looking at each activity and saying, do I have the labor, the materials, the equipment, the permissions, the layout, the information, everything I need. And if the answer is yes, then that's great. Your schedule activity, whatever it ends up being, Hey, that's great. I'm gonna put a little happy face, that's a jam. But if anywhere in here, you have one where the labor, the materials, the equipment, the information, the permissions and the layout are not ready for you, then you need to mark that. If it's something that can be fixed, it's a roadblock. If it's something that's more permanent, like, hey, I can't do that work because it's in the room that is carved out for the hoist or a leave out, Mm, that's not really something that we're going to fix. We might have to work around it. So there are definitely roadblocks and constraints. Roadblocks are temporary, constraints are permanent. The key is if you know your roadblocks out ahead, you have time to fix them. And that's the key. Every time we identify a problem, we identify them, discuss them, and solve them so that we can create flow. That's the single most important thing you can do to create flow on a project. And what we want is all of the trades to see this. Now I'll give you a trick. A lot of times contractors will print out their six week look aheads and hopefully you're doing it as a filter from the tag plan. And they'll say, what roadblocks do you have? And the trade partners are like, I'm good, I don't have roadblocks. So what you're gonna have to do is get them to think about it, think about it with feeling, think about it and imagine it in a 2D environment, think about the 3D environment, think about what they would need when they get there, like really pull them in and using all their senses to see, mm, do I have what I need? The other thing you can do is to set a 10 or 15 minute timer in your meeting or your trade partner weekly tactical or your trade meeting, whatever you call it. And you can say, I want everybody to come up with at least three problems in this plan. And I want you to tell it to me. And how you identify it as a problem is that you look at each of your trade partners' activities. Do you have the people, the tools, the equipment, the resources, the information, the layout, all of those typical things. You can even give them a checklist and then say, if you don't have that market read, here's the cool story I promised. There was a German company and a tact 
trainer that said that they have little cards for each day's activities that they put in these little envelopes. And on the card, it has that list. Do you have the people? Do you have the resources, the tools, the equipment, the materials, the information, the layout, right? The permissions. And if you can't check each one of those boxes, you turn the card around and guess what color the backside of the card is? It's red, you guessed it. So that when they're looking at their look ahead and they see a red card, they know their team's focus needs to go there. And that will help you to identify roadblocks so you can solve them and clear the path. If you have an activity that is ready, it allows the trade partner to now align the delivery of the materials, the equipment, and the people, and to make work ready for that committed activity. That is the main purpose of these. So here are some things that you'll always want to include as a part of your look ahead plans. First and foremost, you'll always want to have all the activities that pertain to the next six weeks. I highly encourage you have six weeks, at least four. You will want to make sure that procurement is aligned to each of these activities, even if you have to add its own activity to showcase when the delivery happens. You will always want to, as a part of this plan, know where your roadblocks and constraints are marked in red. Like we talked about in the weekly work planning video, if there's a new scope of work that's coming up, you will want to plan out ahead the quality pre-construction meetings that will allow you to prepare for that scope of work and really know what the quality expectations are. You may even want to, in this plan, write down initial inspections, meaning when that trade starts, how long will it be before you and the team go out and do an inspection on that first portion of the work? You'll want to have commitment to these. Don't shove this down the trade partner's throat, even though it has flown, it has come from a tax plan. If these need to move around, it must be their commitment. And all trades must have their needs met so that they can actually execute. Remember, no trade stacking, no burdening, and it has to be realistic. The superintendent will make sure that the project team is filtering these and will lead the meeting in collaboration with the trades to vet this information, pull out the roadblocks, solve the problems, and make the commitments. And if you do this and do this right, you will have a look out six weeks ahead. You will be spending time in the future preparing. You will know where all your problems are and you'll be able to get rid of them ahead of time. And you'll know how to properly set expectations for activities to go properly. Your foreman will see with you, they will know with you, they will act with you, you will have buy-in, and you will have a higher percentage chance of actually accomplishing the tasks when you plan them. And again, to help you out, we have great uh, templates, we have great tools, we have Intact as a software, which, like I told you before, they're a really good partner of ours. They have an amazing application. And we have services that will help you to create your tack plan, do your pull plan, do your look ahead, train your team. If you need us, pull us in. We are your support team. Every professional team needs a coach, needs a support. I'll link that in the description below. I hope you do well with this. I hope you've enjoyed this video. On we go.